try to make a hit real quick, see how the car does, see how it acts, see how it likes it. Looks to be pretty happy. look really bumpy right really bumpy and it showed about 789 rural horsepower which isn't that good meaning I think uh, a couple of things are happening I think the tire pressure is too low because according to the math we're at about 820 rural horsepower mod nats and of course we're only at 20 psi on the tire I'm gonna bring them up to 35 retest on the same exact tune Come on, baby. Up. Got to about 35. The other side's already at 35, I think. <clears throat> yep, 35. So we're going to do that on both sides and retest and see if the graph looks smoother and see if it transfers a little more power to the roller, being that the tire will be a little harder. Okay, so I added some air to the tires. I'm going to downlog this second run. I'm going to see if the extra pressure in the tires shows any kind of gain in terms of power and the graph ends up being smoother. it's worth about 20 something horsepower look at that 811 graph looks a lot smoother not as bouncy see nice very good let's take a look at the data log and we can start to do the pulley down process and also upgrade the wiring the fuel pump to accommodate the the boost that's coming in so that the fuel pump has plenty of voltage to throw more fuel at it so autobrock supplied me with a couple of pulleys i believe the one on the left is a 2875 the one on the right is a 2625 two and five eighths and I believe this guy is a 3.0. Let's take it out. And we'll see which one fits with the current belt. Because I really don't want to have to buy a new belt. But if I have to, I have to. This guy's kind of on the loose side anyway. As suspected, a 3.0 pull. And that's where we ran eight, um, 870s in. How did it do that? Well, the car's pretty light. And it's super efficient because of the 4R200 trains. Which pull am I going to try? Let's try what I believe is the 2... 875 2 and 7 eighths. try that do a hit to 6000 rpm see how fueling is keeping up and then give it a full pass okay went from a 3 pulley to 2875 seems to be plenty of tension left over because this guy goes way the hell over here let's do a hit to 6000 rpms see how everything keeps up okay make a pull to 6000 rpm put the gopro by the tensioner Make sure it's happy.
red run is the one with the 2875 pulley and it seems to be well on its way to some nasty shit 816 707 and I stopped the pull at 6300 or so right that seems right on the money so let's look at the log and see if I have enough fuel to get some nuts and go to 7000 rpms <laughs> a teaching moment well it made no power because the belt slipped right here if you look at the log in red is math frequency blue is rpm rpm is fine but as the math frequency climbed to about oh jesus i almost died here to about 6100 rpm the belt said nah we're not going to grip this pulley anymore and it slipped and it took away about two or three pounds of boost so what i'm going to do is let the car cool down Go to the local Napa, get a belt that's, maybe get to two belts, maybe a couple sizes shorter. Let me see what size belt this guy is. Luckily, it's a standard belt, like a K080, because it's an eight rib. And uh, yeah, oh, here we go. It's a K080859, that's what shows. So let me go to Napa. What's smaller than a K080859? We'll get two sizes, one just below and one below that. Put the belt on try again alrighty so I had some belt slip so I went ahead and went to Napa and instead of really telling them a part number or anything the reason to go to Napa and I this isn't a Napa commercial because they don't pay me to do shit they know their shit they legitimately know their shit I went there and I said I need this belt and I had in them an 859 I said it I need it to be about an inch and a half shorter boom that's all I needed to say they didn't say what car does it have air conditioning they said here you go and if you look in the back of this guy, ba-boom, it gives you measurements. So this guy got me an inch and a half shorter belt, which at total, you know, I gained about three quarters of an inch because the previous one I had was too short, okay, because I pulled it down. I went and got a belt that was way too short. Then I said I need an inch and a half longer. Bam, nailed it. So let's do a pull on the 2875 pulley. It looked like it was trending towards 850 wheel. That would be a gain of about... 32 or 33 rear horsepower just on a pulley change so that's good let's get the car warmed up because it is the next day it is now sunday i started on saturday with that guy and by the way i changed the 22s out for 2010 gt500 non i'm sorry 2013 2014 non-performance package gt500 wheels Eh, i'm probably not gonna keep these on the car but they had a set of drag radials on them and with 700 plus wheel this car needs all the help it can get now for that let's make a pull okay let's make a pull uh 2875 pulley um smaller belt 20 degrees see if we can beat 811 on the guy
okay on that last pull with the new belt I got belt slip again um because I actually, actually put it up against it and, and I grabbed the pulley it ended up um having some black shit on it so what I did was this uh I mean I'm hoping I mean I'm just being optimistic is that with the smaller pulley the even smaller pulley the tensioner is in a more favorable position to put tension on the belt it seemed to be at the top of the range now I'm going to bring it to the middle of the range and it'll still have a good chunk to go but I'm hoping that there's more tension in the middle of the um, in the middle of the tension arm angle than before so let's see what happens uh, what am I doing wrong fuel pump so we'll see even smaller pulley on there and it ended up um, making 853 rear wheel horsepower at 722 pound feet of torque let's take a look at the graph before I show you the power numbers I will show you the data log right click drag bam deselect all items if you still don't know how to read a log after watching my videos you have no excuse pedal like a man flat as fuck okay so what are we looking at let's look at short-term fuel trims is fueling keeping up with the 2.625 pulley yes sir it's actually slightly rich scroll 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 my goodness so what i did differently on this uh tune is i ran wide open throttle fueling a little leaner and uh, i tightened up the short trims timing slammed at 20 and a half I could go up to 22 or 23 degrees, but I'm not. I'm just going to leave that for, you know, let's say if I go to the track and it's really close to a number I want to get, I want to have, I want to leave some meat on the bone. Look at load, 2.24. It is pulling some, it is moving serious air. I brought it up to 7,700 RPM. So let's go look at the power numbers real quick. Bam. So let's take all these runs away. Remove all runs and let's go from the beginning. Hush money. So, where are we at? Where are we at? So, first run, way back when, was shit, shit, sh boom, 802. That's the number I'm going to look at. And when was that recorded? Perfect. So, remove runs, remove runs. That's the number I left to mod nationals with, 802, 652. And then today, or sorry, yesterday, the first run... Uh, this isn't good. This is uh, the same day. Remove run. Okay, so this was my first run the other day. 789, 691. Look at how gross and bumpy it was. I said, nah, something's up. So John Mills, who was watching the run, said, your, your freaking tires are wrinkling. I said, crap, the pressure was still 20 or 18 from the track. So, the next run after that was with 35 PSI on the tires. Look at that. A lot smoother graph, and it actually made more power up top. 811, 668. So, basically, that's how the car ran in Mod Nationals. So, then, the next couple of runs, I started, you know, I pulled down, and see, it was at 816, and it was on its way, but then the belt started to slip. As you can see, let's remove remove all runs and start at run eight run eight the belt started to be an asshole and then it was an asshole again and then an asshole one more time and that's when I said wait a minute maybe I'm maxing out the tensioner and it's not in the proper range to put proper tension on the spring and 
Smaller pulley fixed all of those issues. The smaller pulley removed all runs. The smaller pulley actually brought the tensioner to its proper range. Now it's a little wavy up top, so that's telling me a couple of things. Either the tires are really hard or it actually wants more timing. Believe it or not, when you see a wavy graph as a tuner, you go, this thing might want more timing or the tires are really bumpy in the back, but I'm leaning towards timing. But we improved from the Mod Nationals pull, which was, I believe, run four? No, run three. Perfect, run three. Let's get rid of this run. This is what I went to Mod Nationals with, and this is what I'm at right now. I am up 51 horsepower, and holy crap, look at the torque. I am up 70 or so foot-pounds of torque, exactly 70 foot-pounds. That is going to be the deal, mate. That's going to be... The, the, the thing that makes a difference right there, the torque. It's going to get off the line probably too aggressively, so I have to tame that down. But at the end of the day, going from a 3.0 pulley to a 2.625 pulley yielded 51 more horsepower, 50 more foot-pounds of torque, actually 70 foot-pounds of torque more. That is going to be phenomenal at the track. So what I'm going to do is order a Grip Tech pulley in the 2.6 size and a 2.5 grip tech pulley when they come out get some new uh get some new spark plugs and get back out to the track and see if we could better the 871 elapsed time so there you go in the constant pursuit of more power um i basically ended up pulling down from a 3.0 which is this guy to about that size okay because that's a 2.625 now Grip Tech does make a 2.5 pulley, which I probably should buy. And I should buy this 2.625 pulley in a Grip Tech because at the end of the day, you're going to need some serrations in there to make sure the grip is on point, especially when this car is pushing its own power at the track or on the street. The other thing I can do is get a race filter from PMAS and make sure that guy's happy. And one more thing I can do is port the blower. That's right. I'm not doing any porting to this blower yet because I want to see what the stock unit can do for me. If it can get me well into the eights, I don't see a need to port the thing because then I have to roll cage the whole car. I should be roll caging it as we speak. But at the end of the day, I don't want to make this thing a race car. I want to make sure I'm driving it anywhere I want, get in it, and not have to smash my head on all of the bars. So we'll see. I'll have some uh, decisions to make. So what I can do now is filter, pulley, and a port. And we'll see how deep into the eights hush money can go. Thanks for listening, guys. Talk to you later.